Okay, so I just wanted to use a video just so that we could revise, you know, how you predict the ratio of compounds um, using the periodic table. But before we go to the periodic table, I just wanted to very quickly run through drawing out an atom. So if you have something like sodium and you're asked to draw a sodium atom, sodium is 1123. Smaller number is the atomic number, remember? And the atomic number tells us the number of protons, so 11 protons. And remember that protons are positively charged. Atoms are neutral, so they have the same number of positives and negatives. So they have 11 electrons as well, because remember we said that electrons are negatively charged. And then by subtraction, when you take 11 from 23, you're going to see that they have 12 neutrons. OK, now when I go to draw that out, then what goes into the nucleus? 11P, 12 neutrons. And then remember, we said that the electrons then would go around. You can put two electrons into the first shell. You can put eight electrons into the second shell. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need another eight there. That's 10. So I need to put one electron. And then we would have written um, the electron configuration for sodium, 2, 8, 1. Now, then I would have said to you, what group would sodium be in the periodic table? Now, look and see. Sodium has one electron in its outer shell, so sodium would be in group one. And then we spoke about how atoms have stable configurations. All atoms want eight electrons in their outer shells. So what would be the easiest way that something like sodium here could achieve that? Eight electrons in its outermost shell. Well, it has two choices. It either gets seven, because it has one already, or it gets rid of this. And that's what happens. Look, it gets rid of that outer electron. It's rid of this. Now it has eight electrons in its outer shell. But the problem now is it's not an atom anymore. It's not neutral. Why isn't it neutral? Look, it still has 11 positives. The protons will stay in the nucleus. The protons don't ever go anywhere. So you will still have the number of protons, same number of protons. But count up the electrons now. Now you have 10 electrons 10 negative so if you have 11 pluses and 10 minuses then you need to say to yourself you've got an extra which charge an extra plus how many extra pluses do you have you've got a plus one and now it's an ion why is it now called an ion because it's not neutral anymore now it has a charge okay so when we were um when we were looking at periodic tables, I just want to go to the photos there for a second. See the periodic table here now, okay? So you will have this in the exam. So look, we would have said any atoms in group one, so lithium, sodium, potassium, they all have one electron in their outer shell, like I've just, I just drew um, sodium's atom. And if they have one electron in their outer shells, they will lose that electron and because positively charged ions, plus one ions. Anything in group two, two electrons in its outer shell. So something like magnesium would have two electrons in its outer shell, would have to lose two electrons and so become positively charged. Seven, look, in group seven, fluorine, chlorine, they have seven electrons in their outer shell. So their option there is they'll get one. So they become minus one because remember electrons are negatively charged. And anything in group six, minus two. They have six electrons of their, of their own, so they need two, okay? In group three, three electrons in the outer shell. Group four atoms have four electrons in the outer shell and so on, okay? Now, I just want to do some examples now of writing configuration. So if you were asked, for instance, to write the, um, to write the formula for sodium chloride, okay? So you'd go to your periodic table, you'd find sodium. Sodium is Na. Remember when you're writing symbols, the capital for the first letter and a small or lowercase then for the second letter. So look and see. Well, you'll see clearly that sodium is in group one. So we would have learned if it's in group one, it's Na+. Plus. Chlorine's in group seven, so that's Cl minus. Opposites attract, so you will form your NaCl. So that's the formula, that's your answer. That's the chemical formula for sodium chloride, okay? What about then if you were asked to write the formula for something like sodium oxide? Okay, so oxide here. So again, you look at the periodic table, you'll see that sodium is in group one. So sodium is going to be plus one. Okay, oxygen's in group six when you look at the periodic table. So remember we said it has six electrons of its own, so it needs two electrons. So it's going to become minus two. Now, we have a prob bit of a problem here because this is minus two and this is only plus one. So we need two of these. Okay, so your formula then becomes Na2 Oh, now just to recap there now again, remember when we're doing this in school, you have Na plus one 
but this is O minus 2. They won't add to give you 0. You know, you have to add some, the sum of the ions have to add to give you 0. So you need 2 of these, plus 1 and plus 1. So overall now, that's plus 2, minus 2. So now they will cancel. So Na2O will be the formula for sodium oxide. What about if you were asked to write the formula for magnesium fluoride? Okay, let's just do that one there now. Now, magnesium is in group 2. So magnesium will form... Mg plus 2, because it's in group 2. Fluorine's in group 7, so fluorine's minus 1. Now, oppositely charged ions will attract, but be careful, look. This is only minus 1, so you'll need 2 of them, so that the charges will add to give you 0. So then your formula becomes MgF2, okay? And then just I might just do one more um, there for that. Um, so we might... Just do something like calcium chloride, for instance. So if you were asked to write calcium chloride, calcium is in group two. Okay, so that would be plus two. Chlorine's in group seven, so that's minus one. So think what would happen there now when they combine. Oppositely charged ions will combine. Because this is plus two, you need two chlorine so that the charges will balance. So it's Cl, Cl2 then for your, for your formula. Okay, now that's fine. So there would be elements in group one, two, six, and seven. But what about if they asked you about um, writing formulas with elements that are combining with hydrogen, for instance? Now, you know that hydrogen just has the one electron, okay? Because the atomic number for hydrogen is one. So if they said to you to predict the um, formula of um, the compound that will, that will occur between hydrogen and carbon, or sometimes they might ask you how many hydrogen atoms are needed to, to bond with carbon, something like that. So you'd have to say to yourself, right, carbon is in group four. So that means that carbon has one, two, three, four electrons in its outer shell. How will carbon stabilize itself or have eight electrons in its outer shell with hydrogen? It's going to bond with four hydrogens. So look, it's going to combine with four hydrogen atoms. So for the purpose of your exam, you'll be asked then what's the formula of the compound that results when carbon bonds with hydrogen, CH4. Okay, what about if it was a phosphorus? Okay, if you were asked, if you were asked to, to, to write the formula, for the compound that arises, sorry, phosphorus and hydrogen, okay? Okay, it's a H. So phosphorus, when you look up at phosphorus is in group five, so that means phosphorus has one, two, three, four, five electrons of its own. So how many hydrogens will it need? Three. So what would the formula be? pH three, okay? It has five, needs three so that it can have, so that it can have eight, okay? What about if it was oxygen? Oxygen has six electrons of its own. So how many atoms of hydrogen would you require? Well, you'll need two hydrogens for it to have eight because then it'll have one electron from this hydrogen, one electron from this hydrogen and six of its own. So what would the formula be? H2O because you need two hydrogens and one oxygen. Then what about something like sulfur? If you were asked about sulfur, sulfur again is in group six. Okay, so how many atoms of hydrogen will you need? You'll need two atoms of hydrogen to provide those two electrons that are required. So two hydrogens and the sulfur H2S. Okay, right. So that's predicting ratios of um, um, elements to form compounds. That's that outcome. Okay, thank you.